Not a bad place for a splash landing. Whoa, a coral reef. Okay, so now it looks like we'll be doing a coral reef adventure. Good thing we came prepared. Yeah, there are so many different kinds of amazing life forms on the reef. You mean like these guys? Seahorses! Seahorses? I thought you were riding regular horses. Well, uh, our plans kind of changed. We're checking out seahorses now. You know, I've always wondered about seahorses. Yeah, me too. With a head like a horse. And it's got a prehensile tail like a monkey. What, what are, are they? they? Okay, I'll tell ya. But you better sit down for this. What are they? Seahorses are... Fish! What? Oh. They fell over anyway. Maybe we should have told them to sit on the floor. Yeah, next time. What do you mean seahorses are fish? How can a seahorse be a fish? Hmm. Here, I'll show you. Okay. Here's a fish. Then, what Mother Nature did was take this fish and change its head, and then stretch it out so it was more like this, and then bent the body down this way, and then its tail changed from a swimming tail to a tail that can grab. So, a seahorse looks pretty different, but it's still a kind of fish. And there's a reason for the seahorse's unique shape. It doesn't swim all over the place like most other fish. It swims small distances by moving its little dorsal fin back and forth. But most of the time, the seahorse uses its prehensile tail to grab onto grasses and coral and just hang there until food floats by. Whoa, I get it, but it's still kind of weird. So its body design is perfect for its way of living. Exactly. Hey, but that doesn't mean we have to stop riding horses. Let's ride these guys. Uh, Martin, they're seahorses, and they're tiny. Oh, okay, so I'll give our seahorse a smaller name. I'll call you Ocean Pony. And then we can miniaturize and ride. Whoa, wait a second. You guys shouldn't just use miniaturization technology for playing around. This is serious technology. Well, uh, uh, of course we have to do research on the short-snouted seahorse, Hippocampus Hippocampus, to uh, explore how this seahorse um, interacts with other inhabitants of the coral reef system. Yes, of course. Next one, bro. Uh-huh. Yeah, uh-huh. When you two play around with technology, something usually goes wrong. If you're going to use the miniaturizer, you'd better get a lot of info on seahorses. I'm going to prep my invention station for seahorse power disc creation. And I'll be checking in on you. Soon. Crazy ride till they can't see straight. Or they could be saying something a little simpler like, let's play. They are one of the most playful creatures in the world. Uh, okay, so we get it. We get it. Now we know what that click whistle means. Yeah, the dolphin word for let's play is this one right here. Uh-oh. You said it again! While they're having fun, we've got to get to work on getting the sounds we know into a dolphin power suit. Well, see the blowhole that the dolphin breathes from? Right beside it are chords. They vibrate like a guitar string to make the special clicks and whistles. That makes sense. Vibrating things make sounds. So if I incorporate those structures into the suit, we should be able to reproduce the special dolphin sounds. Whoa, whoa! Remember us! How many special whistles and clicks do dolphins make again? Hundreds! At least! Thanks! Whoa! whoa. Okay, you 
to win. You're definitely the most playful creatures we've ever adventured with. Yeah, even adult dolphins play. One of the only animals in the world that still plays when they're full grown. <coughs> whistle and click. Ha, that's what I'll name you two. Your whistle and <laughs> your click. <coughs> Wait a second. I gotta play that back. Incredible. Art, they already have names. That whistle click is his name. Oh, you're right. Dolphins actually have names. Personal whistle clicks that are their very own dolphin names. And is this your name click? <coughs> That's it, all right. Chris, we need dolphin names. I'll be... I don't think they can say that. Must be your Jersey accent. Put a little more dolphin ease into it. Okay, how about this? That's it, that's me, Martin, in dolphin ease. And I'll be... Yes, I can't believe it. We're talking to dolphins. Whoa, a bullfrog can jump 10 times the length of his own body. That is some ultimate leaping ability. And this pond is loaded with bullfrogs. Incoming! <laughs> Yuck, I think I licked him. <laughs> Frogs are such better jumpers than humans. Much. If we could jump like a frog, we could jump 18 meters. Then we could jump clear across this pond. Now that is creature power. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Oh, I think I'm thinking what you're thinking. I think I th I know what both of you are thinking. You're thinking that we need a frog power suit, and I agree. Let's collect some wow facts on these frogs. Be right there. Hi, guys. Whoa, whoa, that was fast. So, where are the frogs? Well, everywhere. But here's the thing. Every time we take a step, a frog launches into the water. They're a little tricky to get a hold of. That's because bullfrogs have a highly sophisticated, highly developed anti-predator evasion system. Legs that leap. And if you can't catch them, join them! <laughs> Well, from first observation, one thing is obvious. The secret is in the length of those legs. Check it out. A frog's hind legs are twice as long as its entire body. This creature is designed for jumping. Hey, where'd he go? I was just behind him and then he was gone. If I take another step, this bullfrog will jump. And then you can find the answer to your question. Okay, one, two, three, ready. doubled back, and I think I know why. It's those bass. The frog jumps into the water for safety, but he can't go deep because big fish will eat him. So he cuts back and heads to the shallows. That's how he stays away from land predators and fish predators at the same time. Hey, you two gotta get in here and check this out. Ribbit. Ribbit. <laughs> We've still got some things to learn about frog powers. Tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it looks like we're getting a turtleback tour of the reef. Hey, there's Blimpy the Blowfish. Oh, yeah. And our old buddy Ocean Pony the Seahorse. And hey, there's, uh, I don't remember him. Yeah, that's because he's somebody new. A, a tiger shark. shark. Whoa! Hold on tight, Chris! I'm holding! I'm holding! Ah! Chris! Whoa! Ah! The tiger shark is gaining! Whoa! Oh! Oh! oh our sea turtle is using his shell like a shield! That's what I'm gonna name you, Shield. But how long can 
shield keep this up? Look at these teeth. Based on size, tiger shark's jaws are even stronger than the great white shark's jaws. If that shark gets the shell in his mouth, or a flipper in his mouth, shield is done for. Shield has another plan. I hope so. That was close. <sighs> and another great defense for the Hawksbill sea turtle, hiding in the reef. Yeah, and that's why Hawksbills are reef turtles, so they can use the coral reef structure to feed them and hide them. Yeah, the shield defense is great when a Hawksbill is caught out in the open, but the surefire plan is to hide out in the protection of the reef. Hey, Aviva, did you catch that turtle power action? Oh yeah, they saw it. So, Aviva, you up for a little turtle power suit programming? Uh, yeah, that was incredible. Nice shield work. I never knew sea turtles were so maneuverable. We saw it all thanks to the amazing fish cam. Hey! I guess I made the fish cam a little too fish-like. Maybe a little. But hey guys, good news. We finished modifying the Tortuga for underwater travel. So get up here and we'll take it for a test drive. Cool. Great. We'll be right there. Uh, as soon as S.H.I.E.L.D. tells us the coast is clear. Great. All clear. Let's get back to the miniaturizer and get back to real size. Yeah, I think we should have a new motto. Only one shark attack per day. I'm with you, bro! Let's get out of here before that target shark comes back. Oh, ho, ho, ho. it's a grown-up version of Blippi. So that confirms it. Blippi's a blowfish! Of course, we should have seen the resemblance. Blippi, this is, uh, Puffy. Can I call you Puffy? And Puffy, this is Blippi. You're neighbors now. And even though you know it by instinct, Puffy can show us all a few things about life on the reef, blowfish style. What are you blowing into the sand for? Whoa. Go on, Blippi, give it a try. Just squirt a stream of water into the sand. And I guess we'll find something important. guys. That's weird. <gasps> Whoa, he found a crab! Oh, ho, ho. you better be glad he didn't find you, Martin. Look at those teeth. He crunches through crab exoskeletons, no problem. Oh, that's because those teeth are fused together into powerful crab crunchers. Hmm? <laughs> uh, nothing to crunch over here. I've been through 3,000 little baby fish, and I still don't know which kind the Crab Brothers are with. Woohoo! Well, this is fun! Yeah, it's even better than a trampoline! Hey, where'd Puffy go? Puffy! Puffy! No way! A grouper! You didn't! Puffy! Puffy, it's you! You're all blown up like a giant spiky water balloon. Nice defense. Uh-oh, Mayday! Now we've got a problem. It's a great defense, and most fish know never to mess with a blowfish, but... For those that don't, sometimes blowfish can get stuck inside a grouper's mouth, and then both fish could die. Hang on, Puffy. We'll get you out of there. Okay, grouper, you might feel a prick. Oh, if only Puffy could deflate just a little bit. He's too scared. If he deflates at all, he thinks the grouper might swallow him. Well, these guys will eat anything. It's not working, Martin. I'm going in. Going in? Where? Through the gills. No, you're not. I'll push, you pull. 
Okay, just remember, one wrong move and you're lunch. <laughs> Pretty stinky in here. Oh, grouper breath. Ready, Martin? Ready, go! <laughs> Huh. Amazing that he can blow up three times his size. And look, now this grouper knows never, never mess, mess with a blowfish. Aviva, we found Thornsley's mom. She's stuck in a mud wallow, and the rest of the herd can't get her out. We need elephant creature power suits, fast! I'm almost done with your discs. Two minutes, and you'll have it. Look, Martin, even Thornsley's trying to save her. Uh oh, he could get stuck in the mud too. Thornsley, wait! Oh no! He's stuck too! To the, the Thornsley rescue. rescue! Hey, you look pretty cool as a mud man. You too, bro! <laughs> Aviva, we need the elephant discs! I've never worked so fast, but they're ready to go. Jimmy is teleporting them now. It's okay, little guy. You'll be back with your mom in a flash. Ah, like I said, in a flash. Stick around, buddy. We'll need you to activate our suits. To the, the creature, creature rescue! rescue! Okay, you grab her trunk with your trunk and pull. I'll do the pushing, Martin. Not bad for a fake elephant. Pull, Martin, pull! Oh, it's working, Chris! We're moving her! Yes, I knew we could do it! Oh, oh no, this stuff is thick. She's stuck again. Guys, we're around the corner. We can help push her out. We're gonna need all the help we can get. Hurry! Don't worry, Thornton's mom. We're gonna get you out. Wait, stop, buddy. We don't want you to get stuck in the mud again. <laughs> Jimmy, keep an eye on him. I'm on it. Oh! Uh, thanks, Thornsley. I wanted a mud mask today. Okay, guys, you're hooked up. Go, Aviva! Ow! Ow! She stepped on my foot! Ah, uh, uh, it's working! Woohoo! Uh, yeah! You did it! Thornsley and his mom are back together. <laughs> Way to go, Elephant Bros! Now that sounds like one happy herd of elephants. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did we just set off the rhino alarm? Yep, we set it off. Whoa! <laughs> Did you see that? See it? I felt it. Ouch. No, I mean the ox peckers hung on even when the rhino charges. Now that's the coolest thing. I win. Okay, you got me. But what I don't get is who would want to mess with the third heaviest land mammal on the planet and take on that charge? So if that's who the rhino was going for, we were just in the way. They're after the calf. <laughs> Amazing! That's a 1300 kilogram mega mammal with some fancy footwork. I've heard of tossed salad, but tossed lions? Incoming! Ooh, that horn is a serious weapon. Rhino defense is awesome. Uh huh? Oh, 
Oh, no. I just tuned it up. I like it. Gives her character. You know, that made no sense. Black rhinos are solitary. They'd never stampede in a huge herd. It's unnatural. Are you okay? Oh, look at that little nub of a horn you got. I'm gonna call you Nubs. Oh, but there's no way your mom would leave you behind, little buddy. Or not come charging towards a lost call. Something's very wrong here. Poachers? I don't know, but we're gonna find out. Let's track them. Uh-oh, don't look now, Chris, but someone's tracking us. They know there's no mom to protect them. We've got to get Nubs out of here fast. I think I'll stick around. Something about that rhino stampede just didn't seem right. I got you, Nubs. Whoa. Kritera, <laughs> don't fail us now. Later, lions. Dude, what are you doing up there? Getting a bird's eye view. I'll take Nubs to safety and be right back. Don't get distracted and forget about me. Oh, don't worry. I won't leave you hanging. Yeah, we're up to kangaroo speed, Martin. <laughs> What's with the weird laugh? Wasn't me. Sounded just like an Australian kookaburra bird. <laughs> That's because it's the cool new kookaburra horn of Eva design. Sweet. Hmm. Okay, you can stop honking now. I only honked once. Ha <laughs> <laughs> looks like the horn attracted a real one. All right, we know it's your turf, Kookaburra. We're moving on. Whoa, we found them. Red kangaroos. Yeah, the males are red, but check out the females. Female red kangaroos are blue. Be out in a second. I'm setting up the digital measuring meter so I can get the distance of their leaps. So Chris, how many roos does it take to hop over your head before you look up? Huh? <gasps> Three! Whoa, got it! That last one just leaped 12 meters. That's about half a meter shy of the max jump distance of the red kangaroo, the greatest jumpers in the creature world. Incredible. I'm gonna add that leg power to your creature power suits. Cool. Jumping, over and out. Hey, you might be small, but I think that last hop was almost a meter high. 40 centimeters to be exact. I'm gonna call you Hopster. So you wanna take me on, huh? You're a tough little guy, aren't you? Oh. He's got to practice. For a kangaroo, kickboxing is as important as breathing and eating because... <gasps> Ooh, nice one, Hopster. You got you good, Martin. Hey, Hopster, where are you going? We didn't even finish round one. <laughs> Probably didn't want to hurt you. <laughs> now, here's what kickboxing is all about. One male roo saying to the other, I'm tougher than you. So, for kangaroos, the best kickboxer gets to be the top roo of the mob. I wouldn't go near that boxing match. One kick from those powerful hind legs could cause a serious stomach ache. Oh! It's a good thing kangaroos have an extra thick layer of skin on their belly to absorb blows like that one. Good luck, challenger. If you win, you'll take over as roo boss. Oh, and the Roo Boss wins and stays head of the mob. An oak tree can drop 23,000 acorns in the fall. And the Blue Jays got one. She flies off. Finds some soft soil. Pushes the acorn into the ground. Blue Jays hide acorns. Well, squirrels can remember where they hid the nuts and dig them up in the winter. Memory. And hey, blue jays are bird brains. Ah, for a blue jay, that's a compliment. Because this bird brain is smarter than a squirrel. 
A blue jay is so smart. She can remember where she hit her acorns through the winter and into next spring and come back to the exact spot to eat it. Oh, better memory. You couldn't do that. Hmm. Get this. Any acorn a squirrel forgets to eat stays safely in the ground. Then, when the snow melts and the sun shines in the spring, those acorns grow into oak trees. That's how the gray squirrel plants the trees that feed it. Well, any acorn a blue jay chooses not to eat stays safely in the ground. Then, when the snow melts and the sun shines in the spring, those uneaten acorns grow into oak trees. That's how the blue jay plants oak forests. <gasps> Blue Jay's better. Gray Squirrel's greater. Blue Jay. Gray Squirrel. Blue. Gray. Blue. Gray. Hmm. Ah! <laughs> ha! Check this out. A gray squirrel digs a fake hole to fool acorn predators, like deer and wild turkey. Turkeys eat acorns too? Yeah, look. The turkey is tricked. The squirrel buries the acorn safely over there. Ha, now that's clever. And we can bury 300 acorns in a single day. Please. <laughs> Just one acorn at a time? <laughs> Us blue jays, we can stuff one acorn into our expandable throat pouch. Then two, three, four in our throat pouch and an extra one in our mouth then fly off with all five acorns at once. All the way over here. Ha, we Blue Jays can carry more acorns at a time and carry them further, up to eight kilometers away, and plant them. That means we can spread the oak trees farther and faster. Go Team Blue Jay! Chris, we gotta get out of here. Worm eaters are everywhere. What are you talking about, Martin? We can't leave now. The mystery of the squirmy wormy. We're getting close. Yeah, close to getting eaten. <laughs> There's got to be a faster, easier way ah! to move around down here. I've got just the thing. to slip in style. Ta-da! A wormmobile. Thanks. Cool. Slime inject emotion with stretch slide worm action. Aviva, this is awesome. Finally, I can move down here worm style. Hey, Martin. Hey, Chris. Woohoo! Looks like we're going up. <laughs> Even though your brain is smaller than a pinhead, I think you know something we don't. Vibrations? Like a mini earthquake. <gasps> mole attack! A star nosed mole. Oh, you sensed its digging vibrations, didn't you? Chris, get out of there fast! Okay, left pedal stretches, right pedal slides, and this lever steers me up. Creature clue number three, here I come! Hey, this thing handles great! Turbo booster's cool! Let's see how much power it has. Woohoo! Wow! 
This wormobile is a blast. I will cook you the most expensive meal of your life. What? So sorry. Platypus eggs are off the menu. Uh, blue boy in a platy cat suit. Get him! Hey, give me back my eggs. <laughs> Martin, over here! <gasps> Thanks, bro. Hey, do you have the platypus sensory power yet? <gasps> no, but I'll trade that for these webbed feet that don't run. Aviva! It's ready! Teleport, Jimmy. Cool. Mobile delivery. Whoa! Jimmy's getting good. Platypus sense on. All right, lights out. Now I got you. Where'd he go? Okay, now we can finish my plan. Do you see a meat mallet somewhere on the counter? Yeah, got it. Tie it to the string hanging from the ceiling. Okay, now grab the tripwire over by the cabinet doors. Tie that to the lower cabinet. Okay, all set. Let the dinner show begin. I got you. Get your hands off me. Oh, over here. Eggs, anyone? Get those wild rats. Ha, I've got you now. Now give me back my $5,000 eggs. Ah. There go some bad eggs. <laughs> Tell me about it. Now let's get these good eggs back to mom. Well, there's no doubt about it. Animals are great inventing partners. Thanks for showing me your sixth sense, Plato. Hey, thanks to you, we got Plato's eggs back safe and sound. Hatching free and in the wild. <laughs> Welcome to the world, Platter. You made it, Platty. Hey, here's your mama. Aww. Whoa, she's attacking. The walrus can hardly move up here. They're like big blubbery caterpillars. Made it. Barely. The bear is in control on land, and the walrus rules the water. Two natural enemies. But what would happen if one caught the other on its own turf? <laughs> well, say bye bye to your mommies. <laughs> A Zack attack! He snatched them right from under our noses. You don't steal baby animals from their moms. What's he gonna do to them? Goodbye! Never gonna see you again! Zack's nastier than an Arctic blizzard. How are we supposed to catch that turbo boosted speedboat? Aha! Uh -huh. By moving the way the creatures move. Yes, running like a polar bear. Swimming like a walrus. We've got to activate our uh, creature power suits. That's one way to do it. Sweet walrus power. What a rip. How am I supposed to touch a bear who wants to eat me? Your problem, not mine, bro. Gotta go. Hang on, bear. I'm on my way. Okay, it's a double cub napping. This will put our inventions to the test. Keep your eyes on those animals and get ready to invent. This is Walrus World. Guys, I could use a little help figuring out how to move down here. Whoa. Uh, uh. Now I get it. Power comes from the back flippers. The back flipper action propels the walrus. Oh, no, to 
yourself. Learn to steer. Uh, oh. That's faceplant numero dos, MK. Oh. I know. For this crazy terrain, I need some long legs and claws like she's got. Mm -hmm. oh. Of course, side flippers steer. Flippers are fingers with webbing between them. That's the inside scoop on flipper power. Have flippers, we'll travel. Okay, walrus, let's go save your calf. Cutting down this huge tree by yourself? With your teeth? How do they do it? Whoa, big orange teeth. That's how. And they're super strong. Those teeth can cut through a tree this thick in just a couple hours. No way. Slicing right through wood, their teeth get all worn down in no time. They do. That's why beaver teeth never stop growing. Imagine if they didn't get worn down by all that chewing. In one year, they'd grow a meter long. Huh? That would be weird. Was it something I said? Okay, so this is the first step in beaver dam building. Collecting the wood. Got it. Now what? Back to the dam. Whoa, 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 easy, guys. Stop messing with my computer. Koki, while the guys work on that dam, I'm gonna see if I can harness the power of those incredible cutting beaver teeth. It says here that the orange part of the teeth is really hard, but the white part is softer. So, the white part wears away faster as the beaver chews, keeping the teeth super sharp. So that's how they do it. One set of beaver chompers coming up. You can't fix a beaver dam without beaver teeth. There! I can't believe how much of this wood you guys move. 200 kilos of wood a day? That's like a truckload of wood. Then we'd better get into gear. <laughs> Yes! The water level is rising. The dam is stopping the water again. All right, well, that was easy. Uh-oh. Whoa! Hey. Uh-oh, double uh-oh. Uh, I don't have any arms and legs left. Chris, help! <laughs> Well, somehow that didn't work the way we planned. Uh, oh no! The water is all drained out! <gasps> Aha! Mud! Oh, now you tell us. It fills in the gaps between the sticks and makes the dam strong and watertight. Using mud to build a beaver dam is like using concrete to build a house. Let's rebuild. We'll pack in the mud. We'll get more wood. <laughs>